Hello! Here is another video from Simply Studies. These videos help you understand the basics. For great scores, press subscribe now and visit our website. When answering PT reading fill in the blanks, as we have discussed before, we should know what parts of the speech are there. So let's do a lecture in which we can find out uh, the word, what parts of the speech does it belong to. Now starting with nouns. Identification of parts of speech now. Number one, nouns are the names of person, place, etc. So Arnold was absent on his graduation ceremony. Now this Arnold is the name of a person. It means it's a noun. Ceremony is the name of an event. So it's also a noun. Another example, we tried to locate the building on the map, but were unsuccessful. This building is the name of a structure. Map is also a name of something which we use to locate things. It means that's also a noun. His procrastination was the reason for failure in life. All these four words are nouns. Procrastination is one of his habits. Reason is also something, failure is also something, life is also something. Okay? Another identification for noun is they are singular or plural. For example, many of his friends were successful businessmen. So this friends, if we look at this word, it's a plural form of friend. So any word which can be uh, singular or plural is a noun. Businessman, here we have M E N man, which is the plural form of businessman with an A, which shows that this word is a noun. She was popular among her classmates because of her powerful personality. Classmates is a plural, it means it must be a noun. Personality is the singular form of personalities. It means this is also a noun. They are showing possession. There is an apostrophe at the end of the word. Okay, let's see. They advised her to go to the manager's office. Now this, there is an apostrophe which shows possession of manager to office. Means it's the manager's office. So this word manager is a noun. The boy's bus is always late. This boy, boys has an apostrophe at the end, which means it's showing possession. So boys is also a noun by this theory. Another very easy thing is to note is they have one of the common noun suffixes. Now what is there? Magnetic radiation is known to cause mental disorders. Radiation. At the end of this word, there is T-I-O-N, which is a suffix normally used in nouns. How can such a monstrosity be allowed to be erected in the city center? This word monstrosity has uh, a suffix I-T-Y, which is again a sign of a noun. Okay, let's do some common noun suffixes. For example, S-I-O-N. When it comes at the end of a word, normally it's a sign of a noun, like aggression, expression, T-I-O-N, attention, location, A-C-Y, legacy, conspiracy, A-G-E, adage, bandage. These are all signs of nouns. With the suffix, suffix we can easily identify. Clearance, attendance have an A and C-E at the end. Even with E and C-E, like ambiance, Decadence, AR, liar, scholar, ITY, pity, clarity, ISN, capitalism or autism, IST, like guitarist, minimalist, MENT, like amendment, appeasement, or NEWS, madness and preparedness. 
Now there are dozens of more suffixes which create nouns and these were the common ones. You can take a note and revise it. Okay? Let's go to another part of speech that is pronounce. Now pronounce then there's an easy way to identify pronounce. That pronounce can be replaced with a noun. So let's have a sentence. We want to open this bag for inspection. Now here the word we, the first one, can be replaced by some other words. For example, inspectors, which is a noun. If we just change this we with inspectors, so the sentence is still making sense. Inspectors want to open this bag for inspection. It means that word we was a pronoun. Okay, let's have another example. Everyone has a right to live peacefully in his country. Now here the word everyone can be replaced by some other word. For example, George is a noun. So if a word can be replaced by a noun and it still doesn't change the meaning of the sentence, so it means that word was a pronoun. That's an easy way to identify pronouns. Let's do another part of the speech, verb. The first way to identify the verb is they have different forms in terms of tenses. So they can be past or present. And they have one of the common verb suffixes. Let's see what does it mean. So for example, we have a sentence, we waited for the train for 20 minutes. Now this word waited, we can see it's past form of the word wait. So whenever a word can have a past form, it means that verb word is a verb because only verbs have tenses. Okay, only they can be present or past. Or another one, the company has demonstrated its ability to locate to quickly change its products. Demonstrated, again it's a past form of demonstrate. Or this change, we can have changed. So both of these words are verbs. Another sign, they have one of the common verb suffixes. For example here, we are here to rectify the problem. This rectify, the last word, digits, the last alphabets here is I, F, Y. These are common suffixes in case of verbs. It means this rectify is a verb. Or the country was trying to rationalize its educational policies. This I, Z, E is again a suffix used to make verbs. Or people tend to gravitate towards the popular ones among them. This word gravitate ends in A, T, E which is a common suffix, common verb suffix. Let's do some common verb suffixes for example I, Z, E materialize, commercialize, A, T, E, meditate, levitate, all these are examples of verbs with common suffixes after them. ITE, ignite, expedite, IFY, ratify, magnify, EN, straighten, lengthen. Okay, now we move on to adjectives. Now, adjectives, there are three identifiers. The first one, they have degrees such as tall, taller, tallest, high, higher, highest. This is a sign that this word is an adjective. They are used to define a noun or pronoun. This is the function of adjectives. And again, they also have some common suffixes. Let's do some examples. The older you become, the wiser you are supposed to be. These older and wiser, we can see this is the comparative form of the words old and wise. And we can have oldest and wisest. So the words which can have these three degrees of comparison are adjectives. It means this older and wiser are adjectives. Oh, this one. This is the cleverest use of paper I've seen. So the cleverest is the superlative form of clever. It means it's an adjective using this theory. Next one. They're used to define a noun. His rude attitude didn't help him. Rude attitude. So this word rude is telling something more about the attitude. What type of attitude was? It was rude. This attitude is a noun. So the word that is defining attitude must be an adjective. So this rude is an adjective. 
didn't help him make long lasting relationships this relationships long lasting friendships friendships is a noun and we have long lasting before that so this long lasting must be an adjective the metal is used widely because of its malleable nature what type of nature malleable nature so this malleable must be an adjective another sign they have one of the common adjective suffixes for example here in this sentence one of the most contagious diseases was finally eradicated by observing a cleaner lifestyle here the word contagious the last alphabets are o u s which is a sign that this is a, an adjective or the next one cleaner e r normally adjectives have this the suffix so Let's do another example. Widespread availability of modular components resulted in decreasing prices of the system. Modular. This AR suffix is a common adjective suffix. Let's do a list of common adjective suffixes. This AL, normally when it comes at the end of a word, they are adjectives like frugal, matrimonial, and FUL. helpful careful like child like life like ish brackish selfish able malleable retractable or ible horrible terrible at accurate graduate ar seller insular ous prosperous vociferous or ive comprehensive negative So these are some of the common adjective suffixes which can help you identify adjectives. Another part of speech is adverb. Adverb is a verb which can be identified by these two easy things. This there is a verb that is being defined. So when a word is defining a verb, it is an adverb, and they usually end in ly. For example, he was advised to tread carefully. This carefully. A is defining tread, which is a verb. It means this carefully must be an adverb, and it also has an ly at the end. Or oh, the cell was fully developed in ten weeks. Fully developed. How much developed? Fully. So this developed is a verb, and this fully must be an adverb here. Okay, let's do an example. This is reading fill in the blanks. There are seven words here. If you know this. So these two words, complained and flourished, are the past forms of some word. Like complain and flourish, it means they must be verbs. So this way we have identified these two words. Another word is prospects, which because of this s at the end, we can see this is a verb. No, this is a, a plural. So plurals only are in the case of nouns. Okay, let's do another example. Now this one, there are these three words that are ending in ly, which is an easy way to identify that these must be adverbs. Or here, yeah, stripped, devastated. These are past forms of some words. It means they must be verbs because only verbs have past forms. Or this ravenous, which has this o u s suffix. which identifies this word as an adjective okay so that's all for today you should watch this video many times until you are expert in understanding and identifying different word forms okay thank you